So hi, welcome, Hobgoblin 3D, official announcement for Kickstarter 1. Um, I'm Kevin Myrie, in just a moment we'll be taking you through um, progress on where the tavern's at. So no doubt you've all seen the Kickstarter tiers that we've launched previously, so the um, well-fed pack, the well-stocked pack and the drinks pack, we've launched those. Uh, now I'm just going to take you through where we're at with the tavern because it's been a long climb getting to where we are, but we're almost ready and complete with moving forward on it. So without further ado, I'll take you through the progress and it'll be a few moments of me explaining the system, how it all works, how it clips together, um, the pros, some of the cons, and that should hopefully give you an idea of where we're at. Um, if there is anything else that anyone needs to know, fire away in the comments below. Um, and do email us if you've got any questions or if you want a further explanation. We'll be putting out more updates around this as we go forward, so there'll be a nice PDF explanation somewhere along the way. Probably a blog post or two, because we're a bit behind on doing blog posts. But anyway, so without further ado, no more waffle, let's get into it. So here we are, Kickstarter update. Um, Hobgoblin 3D proudly introduces you to the Tavern Progress. So we're not finished on the tavern, there's been a bit of delay. If you remember when we first ran the Kickstarter, we mentioned that we were going to look at modular systems and we were going to look at how to keep that aesthetic in place that pretty much signifies that it's Hobgoblin 3D. So it's taken a bit of time on the R&D to get down the interlocking process and how we wanted that to work. Um, if you remember, what we had initially was big, chunky, rough pieces, kind of taking a lot of material up, no interlocking, it was all held together with <laughs> pieces of glue, blue tack, everything else, so we could just get an idea down for what the prototype would look like, so they're gone, done with, don't need them. What we do have is a nice clandestine interlocking system that locks pieces together a few pieces at a time. Um, so what we started with was we looked at tiles that were existing before now and it was tertiary pieces and there was no way to just quickly snap pieces together in one way break them apart nice quick and assembly this is what we've been working on and you can see we've tried to minimize on how much material is used so they do print reasonably quick they assemble fast and they just break away nice and easy and then clip together now there's been quite a few tests on these to make sure that all edges are a little smoother than what these are because these are a bit on the sharp side. Um, we've also introduced as well because uh, we found that a lot of tiles that were printing corner pieces with the floor pieces which it doesn't really allow much in terms of how you approach your build. So what we've done is we built corner pieces initially but we found then the way that these actually fit together it binds too tight so it was kind of hard to separate off so we went with the half tile approach so half height walls that will then eventually snap off now this is an inverse corner and I think we've removed this piece because we couldn't find a use for it um, but they still clip on nice and easy now an interesting thing that we do have um, the potential for this system what it does open up is the possibility for floating walls so if we bring in this piece here and clip on. Now these are some earlier prototype pieces. We've got some more developed stuff that I'm going to show you in just a moment. But what it means is we can now have floating T-junctions that can build corners. So we can have internal walls. Oops, sorry. Two seconds. We can have internal walls that do just slot in to place. which means now you're free to actually just create an entire square for a dungeon and plus map out then which way your alleyways are going to go, where your rooms might be. So internal walls are now a thing. So that's a big headache and a problem solved. So these are really very early pieces that just break away and clip back together. So that was earlier progress that we've not got around to showing you guys. But we did then progress on from there. So to a nice standard block out of a tavern and one thing that we found was that roofs there was no real decent way of approaching modularity so what we've done with this system is we've introduced a full working roof 
that you can assemble, disassemble and block out, make any size that you want. And the way that this works is through capstones that just lock in place. There we go, nice and neat. And then tiles that slide in and out of the build. So if we take out a lot of these tiles at a minute in time, we kind of disassemble how it would all go in. We can show you exactly how this system works. So that is how the tiles slot in. So they have two inlays where they just slide in reasonably easy and then fold down so you can have an edge tile, place in another one above that, and then you just carry on the system stacking up. So that's how tiles work for roofs. Now what this means is if we strip this roof entirely there, and you see how quick these go in and out. It's just nice, easy, slot in, slot out, quick on assembly again. So that's something that we wanted to focus on was how much time you guys get to build um, versus how much time you get to play because no one really wants to slow down the game too much. 3D printing is slow, it's cumbersome, it can take a while to get all these parts printed as it is so the last thing you want is then to have to spend another two, three hours assembling the thing. It's, it's assemble it as quick as you can, get your game going and use it how you need to run it. So in terms of how the roof constructs then, so this is built up from a few parts. Essentially it builds an entire roof frame that Now this is, there we go. <clears throat> so, in terms of modular roofs, we have a base frame. So, base frame that clips in, uses the exact same clips as what's on the tiles. But you build a base frame like that, you've got the positive pieces that slot into the top of the roof. You then have side pieces that just clip onto where the frame goes. So there's two types of end piece. You have inner sections and then you have the end wall pieces. So they would again just clip in nice and easy into place like so. And then roof tiles slot in, reasonably standard, and then you just carry on building out your roof from there. Now one thing we found with this system was it didn't really hold together too well so we had to reiterate on these parts but this was an initial piece that we got up and running but you can see how it pulls apart and how then if it pulls apart far enough the tiles don't really stay in too well so we had to address that issue before we could move on any further. And you might be looking at these end pieces and saying well which way round on an FDM printer would this print because you've got overhangs and surely that would mess up the inlays. Well we're way ahead of you so what we have is pieces that actually just pop in as end caps just to finish off the end of the roof and then just piece together nice and easy and these are sparse on detail at the moment and this is just a test just to make sure that the system worked it was all in place there weren't really any faults or many faults with it so we could move forward so it looked really basic when you saw the initial build a minute ago was it all together it looks really basic but this is only a test so we can then figure out how to get the details in so that was kind of progress wise where we ended up um, just a few weeks ago so it was a couple of weeks back we actually built the standard piece and saw that the system now can go forward there was a few other issues that we addressed with it that I'll get onto in a moment right so we then progressed on from that point to adapting the roof tiles so you can see it's not probably the best piece to show but you can see how it was just two rods that would then slot between the roof tiles and they went holding together so we needed something that was a little more solid that held all the roof in one part so we went from just a standard rod design that just slot in, slot in two um, like an L-shaped hook that would then I'm not sure if you can see inside the inlay but there's now a, an inner lip as well so when the pieces slot in it then holds the entire thing apart and that is solid there's no way that's going to come apart when you lift off the roof um, another problem that we did find um, so we did the straight standard test and now we've just because we want to maintain the style we've been working on 
getting the curvature and that kind of hobgoblin aesthetic so you get the curved roofs, the curved walls. And we found with pieces where we had them before with just a straight square slot on piece that it was once the system was assembled it was kind of hard to pull it apart it was catching too much on itself so you were lifting the entire build rather than it just sliding on nice and easy so we had to adapt where the roofs and where the second parts of the wall would just join onto the top of the build and what we want is just a system where you can have the fully assembled build in place all clipped together and then when you need to lift off for the players and you've got the inner environment the entire build just pulls off nice and easy um, so that that literally now it doesn't hold on too tight but it doesn't need to and i don't think you'd want it to um, and that's purely just so when you need to lift off an entire top section of the building or just the roof you can just lift it off nice and easy it doesn't then knock any inside items around it's just then lift off the entire full build so that's kind of where we're at. Um, there's not a great deal more to show. Now where roof modularity is concerned, you can go with a set size of what we've got currently, which I believe this one covers a, let's have a look, a three by three, so a nine tile grid. We will be doing larger roofs for larger rooms, but what this means is you kind of have two sizes per roof assemblies so you can take out the inner top section and just assemble two together so it does mean that you can reduce that three by three down to what would be a two by two and i don't think anybody needs to go smaller than a two by two excuse me and then it would mean that larger rooms can be of a larger size say i think it probably reduced from like a five tile system down to a seven tile system it's worth noting that each tile is four a two by two inch square tile so it is based on an inch system that's i think everything that we've got going on so far so we'll get more clips and footage in of the build and how it works and just a step by step on the process there are some quirks to it in terms of how you approach assembly so if we can break away a few of the pieces so a few quirks that we've found is you have to pull parts off because and this was a headache that we had for some time trying to figure out how we might get this system to work and not impact on how it goes together so it makes more sense to assemble end of rooms first so you'll see that they run in an, an anti-clockwise fashion so if you can see there the walls run straight they'll feed into the corner the next corner goes down feeds into the next wall so they go in an anti-clockwise fashion um, which does mean that you have to assemble um, from corners first so as with more things in life it start with the corners everything else is a lot more easy um, so that means straight wall piece you can then clip the corners into place nice and easy Assemble the wall out from there, so any midsections should just clip in. And again, with your other corner assembled, click on. And you know you need a 3x3 three three room, so that's, that's essentially it. And then the top half of the walls can just slot on. And you can see here, as we mentioned, the grip that we have on that is quite strong. So we had to reduce that down to what we had with the latest version where we've rounded off the ends quite a lot we've tapered them in so there's no friction between the top half of the wall and the bottom half so you can lift the entire build as one it'll still be stable while you're carrying it around and then when it's on the table you can just lift off nice and easy as mentioned so you've assembled one end wall piece and it's the same for the other end wall and what that means is then you can just take the end sections push them in nice and easy and there you go you have a very strong stable build doesn't come apart and i could probably drop this on the floor and zero problem still in one piece so that just shows how strong this system is it's pretty robust 
um, and I believe somewhere on here you'll be able to see why we've gone with the dual clip method that we have. So if we just disassemble this wall section and take this off, what you'll see, if I can find a piece, so you can see one of the clips has lost a tooth um, and that doesn't impact anything. So it means that you can get away with giving these things some pretty serious hammer and they'll still assemble in one piece. So even if one clip loses a tooth or two, it'll still come together and still function as one. So you don't then have to reprint a tile, you can carry on with the broken part. And it'll probably last you a good long while after that. And as mentioned, these clips really are quite hard to break. So you've got the walls that clip together, the floors that clip together, and eventually that just results in a really solid build. Um, so the next steps from here will be curving out the roofs. Um, we've got everything else working. We've got internal walls working. So it is just get the curved roofs working and then we can start adding some detail into these things, getting the doors and windows in. And that's it, we're near enough there. We are almost at a place where we're having the tavern completed. So estimated delivery time, uh, looking at around halfway through September, maybe towards the end of October, somewhere within the next few months, it will be ready, it'll be out before the end of the year. Um, we we'll, should hopefully have all the stretch done by end of November, halfway through December at the latest. So the majority of Kickstarter, um, one Tavern Born, Raghaven, will be ready by the end of the year, which will just leave add-ons for 2019. And we have the system built now, so the add-ons, it is just taking the system that we've got and then detailing that up as well. We have got some of the big announcements. I can't say much more around that yet. It does revolve around the system, but not in a way that you might think. Um, but there's something cool coming and we hope you stay posted for what that might be. Um, can't say too much more, but good things are coming. So stick with us. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for your patience on us getting the tavern together because we did want to get it out first, but given how much was involved in terms of getting the um, interlocking mechanisms down in terms of making sure that we can still maintain the aesthetics, figuring out how the roof pieces needed to function. It's, it's been quite an intensive R&D process and we've had to scratch our heads around which way these need to be orientated on the build plate from um, which way round they needed to lock together. So we've really had to think quite hard about how um, to work within the constraints of printing from a horizontal platform to ensure that we can still clip together in different axes for the different parts. So you, um, I hope you understand the complexity of what went into that because it was a headache. It did take quite a bit of heavy R&D. As simple as it does seem now, um, it's been somewhat of a, of a grind getting to this point. But we've got here, we'll be due to launch, so stay posted. That's Kickstarter, Raghaven, Tavern Born, almost ready, almost complete, and I hope you guys like it when it launches. So thanks for your support guys.